one of the things that I really point out in the book is the, the concept that Mr. Bodhi taught us of the leadership rules and the black belt rules in the dojo. And what they were, were really a series of affirmations that we would say at the beginning of class and we'd say at the end of class. And when you say affirmations over and over again and put like a good intention or emotion behind it, like it, it, it gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. And one of those, one of those is I never give up. I always keep trying. Okay. So I tell this story about how that wasn't just a saying that he had a say in the dojo because it sounds cool. He literally lived it. And I tell the story of how when he was uh, he, years before I was even born, right? He was uh, doing, he was in Japan and he was doing a sword demonstration for some martial arts thing. They had done this a bunch of times, right? They had done this a bunch of times, but somebody slipped, something happened, a mistake was made, and he got impaled. He got physically impaled on a sword, right? And he has a big scar, like right here, <laughs> like, like right under his rib cage, like right over here somewhere. Big nasty scar there because he got impaled. And um, I had to, I interviewed him for a national essay contest that my mom signed me up for that summer. And so I sat down to ask him about his life and all this kind of stuff. And the sword thing came up and he didn't want to talk about it. He didn't want to talk about that. He also got shot in Vietnam. He didn't want to talk about that either. So he's got a purple heart <laughs> from, from being shot in Vietnam, but he also got stabbed. And uh, the thing was, is what he said was that he realized when that happened, that he had to control his mind. He said, I have to stay awake. I just got to focus on staying awake because if I stay awake, I won't go into shock. And if I don't go into shock, I won't die. So they were, they rushed him to the hospital and he was, he was bleeding out bad. And he was just focused on, I can't give up. I always keep trying. I, I can't give up. Right. I, I never give up. And I, and I got to stay awake. I got to stay awake. I got to stay awake. And the doctors thought it was a miracle that he even survived that he lost so much blood and stuff like that. But the fact was he controlled his mind in that moment and had a, 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 a can't quit attitude about it. And so the mantra of, I never give up. I always keep trying. Wasn't just something he taught us. It was something that he fundamentally believed. Right. And so that type of belief, it, 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 it creates an identity of resilience, right? Of resilience. If you have that kind of mentality, man, life throws all sorts of crap at you and you're just like, whatever, I'll deal with it. <laughs> I'll deal with it, man. It's a pretty good story. Um, if you go through my YouTube videos, I have a couple of recordings uh, as I was working on the audio version and I tell that story in there. It's pretty good. So the final one here, and then I got to feed these damn dogs is self-reflection and paradigm awareness. Okay. So men must observe their behaviors and recurring patterns to identify limiting paradigms. All right. And one of the ways I, I break down how to do this is through journaling, right? If you get yourself a journal and you take you take like 15 minutes a day, you know, at the end of your day and just reflect on your day and think about different situations, you know, different emotions that came up through the day. Uh, someone treated you like shit and you maybe, you, you know, blasted them and, and you know, yelled at them back or whatever. Write that down. Talk about that. Right. Because that will identify a pattern of emotional reactivity. And you're like, that'll help you identify that sort of thing. So, you know, OK. I need to work on that. I need to work on that emotional reactivity. I didn't realize I was doing it until I sat down and journaled this. And then over time, you'll actually start to see that, that progress, you know, you'll start seeing that progress of you working your way out of that. It's one of the reasons why in the red pill space, we talk about doing field reports that field, the field report process is nothing more than journaling. If you think about it, it just sounds, sounds less, less gay. <laughs> if you're you're doing field reports instead of journaling, right? Just call it whatever you want. It's the same thing. That awareness leads to conscious efforts to reshape paradigms and align actions with desired outcomes, right? So once your subconscious becomes conscious, 
now everything that you're doing is a choice, right? And so you can actively work to try to change those things that are holding you back in life, okay? All right, that's uh, that's essentially chapter three, uh, but definitely get the book because I go way more in depth in that. So that's the essential skills of a masculine presence psychology paradigm. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Subscribe now.